Okay, welcome back to EENG 460, and I think this is number four. So last uh, couple of videos, you know, we introduced the uh, QT SPIM, and uh, the let's see, the previous ones we did load immediate, right? Because we need to really get values in registers before we can do anything. So what I thought we'd do today is um, go back and uh, let's actually do something with those um, registers once we have uh, data in it. So let's bring up our little um, notepad document and. Um, Let's uh, just do uh, let's do some addition. So what we'll do is we'll create some comment statements here. Demo program. Uh, you know you can do stuff like this: file name, whatever you want to do, and uh, put your you know lab name, lab number, uh, date, and all that good information there. And then what we could say is uh, addition of registers. All right. So yeah, I typically always put some comments at the top of my program to kind of uh, just give me some information and you know, you'd probably want to do more than this but saving time in the video now you remember what kind of things do we need in our program notice I tab over to kind of give it structure I'd like you to do that too you always need a data section right and then you need a text section alright let's go ahead and comment those guys so let's come over to here we'll call this my data section and then um, over to here and we'll call this my uh, text section and then there was one other thing all our programs are going to have well that's going to be um, how to exit out of the program normal termination of the program and we did that by doing a load immediate and there's another register called v0 and we're going to put 10 into there okay. and then we're going to do this thing called syscall and I've got uh, uh, a couple of videos on the syscall stuff that we'll do later. But when you look at what I've typed in here, every single one of your programs is going to have this. Now, what's the data section? Well, the data is the data. That's what you operate on. What's the text section? Well, that's your program. All right. And what's this right here? Well, that says it's the end of your program. Now, there's something else we can do here um, in the after the text section. I can come along and use another directive called global and what I can do is I can define a label my main okay. and then what I can do is I can use that and put that label right there and then main code goes here okay alright so this is kind of the general format I'd like you to use um, you have some comments up top, you have a data section, which we haven't done with anything with yet, but we will. And then you have your text section, okay, which goes all the way down here. And then inside your text section, I'm using a global to create a global variable called my main. And I'm using that as a label because what's going to happen later in the course is we're going to create main procedures and we're going to have subroutines or sub procedures and the main will call those procedures which may call other procedures and will identify them by a label right here so this label says well this is the beginning of my main and then this statement right here says this is the end so the main code goes right here all right well what do we want to do here I want to add some registers so what I can do is I can use my old friend the load immediate and let's work with register t1 and let's put uh, quad one into there all right and then we'll load immediate and we will do register uh, t2 and let's put uh, quad two there now we're going to introduce a new uh, mnemonic and that's the add the add is an r-type command it takes three arguments uh, the first one is the destination register and then you have the source and the target register okay so let's type that in there and we'll call that um, t2 all right, now you kind of notice um, the structure. Yeah, a lot of students they tend to put everything in column one. Don't do that. That's just going to make me mad when I grade your stuff. <laughs> you can start off with the comments in column one, and then you tend to indent over to define the data section. Then you indent or tab over to get the text section, and then the definition, the declaration of your labels. And then notice I have my mnemonic here, and then I tab over, and my first arguments are always in the same column. My second arguments are always in the same column. Okay. Now third's not they're not going to be there because sometimes the spacing. 
But what we've done is we've put quad 1 into register T1, we've put quad 2 into register T2, and then the add statement, it takes the contents of T1, which is quad 1, adds it to the contents of T2, which is quad 2, and then that should end up being quad 3, and that gets stored into T3. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and save this guy. And we'll go back to QT spim now, and I will reinitialize. And I will recent files. Now I'm using test.s on all these, so we'll just reload test.s. And there you go. Okay, here's the uh, load immediate, quad one, load immediate, quad two. Here I'm adding the two, and then there's my normal termination. Okay. Now um, let's go look at our registers. We reinitialize things here, so Notice uh, T0, 1, 2, 3, they're all 0. And I can run this program full bore, which I showed you last time. Okay, And it should put quad, and then notice it stops down here. That's where my program terminates. It's going to put quad 1 into T1, quad 2 into T2, and then it's going to add those two. And T3 had better be equal to quad 3. Well, let's click on the registers and see if that's what happened. Yeah, we explicitly put quad 1 into T1, quad 2 into T2, and then I did the add command on T1 and T2, and I got quad 3. So yeah, it worked. Now let's um, reinitialize the sim later. Okay. So notice now all my registers went back to 0. And let's go back to text. Okay. Now i got to reload it, because when I, re when I initialized it, I cleared out the program. So let's uh, put that uh, test.s back in there. Now. You know, when you're writing programs, you don't want to run them full bore, right? You want to kind of single step through them to make sure everything works. And that's what I'd recommend is you start doing assembly, just single step. Do one command at a time, double check that it does what you think it does, and then go to the next one. But unfortunately, you know, students tend to be in a hurry, and they're like, ah, I don't want to do it one step at a time. I just want to run it full bore. It'll work. I'm sure it'll work. Yeah, what could go wrong? <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, what can go wrong? Well, what I would do is I would encourage you not to run the entire program, but rather to go to simulator and single step through. Now, you can click a single step or you can press the F10 key. All right, I'll click that. Okay, so what this shows me is I just executed this first instruction, and the next instruction I'm going to execute is the load immediate on T2. So at this point, I'm single stepping through my code, and I've executed this instruction which put quad 1 in T1. Well, let's go look at T1. And there you go. Notice T1 has quad 1, but T2 and T3 don't have anything. All right, let's go back to our text segment. And now, you know, you can press F10, or you could click single step. And now we just went and executed this statement. And then the highlighted statement is the statement that you're going to execute if you click again. So now at this point, I should have quad 1 and quad 2 in T1 and T2 respectively. Let's go check. There's quad 1, and there is quad 2. All right, let's go back to our program, and now I am going to push F10, and I should execute the add command. So notice, you know, if I click back in this window, it highlights what current command is to be executed. And um, now I should have the sum of T1 and T2 and T3. And in fact, I do. There's 1. Quad 1 plus quad 2 is equal to quad 3. And um, yeah, you did. You basically have single step through your program. Now, if I come along and single step again, okay, it takes me down to syscall. And then if I do it again, it uh, doesn't go anywhere. It stops because that's how you terminate an assembly program. Otherwise, it's just going to keep walking through memory. That will be part of your code. But if you do this again, what it does is it actually goes back to the top and then re-executes this and then starts executing your program again, all right? But you may want to clear out your registers before you start off from scratch, okay? So yeah, that executes single step in, or single second. And let's see, let's, um, let's go back and uh, reinitialize the simulator and let's uh, pick up test and let's just run it full bore. Double check our registers. Yep, see all these guys are zero. Let's go back, run it. And now that we're confident that it works, and there you go. Quad 1, quad 2 equals quad. When you add those, it equals quad 3. All right, there you go. There's a simple add command. Add T1 to T2 and store the result in T3. All right, that's enough for today. We'll see you next time.